Peace be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to Christ our Lord. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came up to him with her sons, and kneeling before him, she asked him for something. And Jesus said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Command that these two sons of mine may sit one at your right hand and one at your left, in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the chalice that I am to drink? They said to him, We are able. He said to them, You will drink my chalice, but to sit at my right hand and at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those whom it has been prepared by my Father. And when the ten heard it, they were indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and, that, and their great men exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Ushuha la la aminai. Ushuha la mshiha mara. Good evening, family. It's great to see you. Uh, really an awesome gospel. It will be this Sunday's gospel. So I, so I figure let's, let's read it and get our minds ready for what this Sunday will be all about. And the mother of John and James and John, she has a really good request. She wants her sons to be basically awesome. Jesus is a king. And so she wants her sons to sit at his throne, right? What mother wouldn't want that for her children? Um, But she must not have heard how Jesus says, those who exalt themselves will be, and those who humble themselves will be. I wonder if she was there during that sermon, because I don't know if she would have asked for that. Jesus came not to be served, but to serve and give his life. And any Christian is meant to imitate Jesus in that type of humility, family. Humility is the only way, and it is the way of Jesus. We are meant to imitate him. And so in this world, it's the countercultural world way of life, but in this world, it's all about the highest place. But Jesus says, take the lowest, be a servant, be a slave, serve others. So the mother of James and John was wrong in that, in that sense. God's will for you will be love, amen, but it will be humility. So when you're discerning the will of God, God, what do you want for me? What do you want for my life? Don't just ask, how can I acquire? How can I rise up? Lord, how am I called to serve those that you're putting in front of me? The second thing she kind of doesn't do very well She's asking for something in the future. Lord, when you go and take your throne, when you are exalted above all, then place my sons at your left and at your right. Family, I understand we discern, we think about the will of God, and we think like, okay, I have to think about the future. But God's will Where is God's will? Like, when is it? When is God's will? In the present moment. God's will for you is right here and right now in this moment. At I just got a nice watch. I'm just joking. God's will for you is at 7.08 to be here and sitting here and listening to this priest who maybe is putting you to sleep. God's will for you is in the present moment, right here and right now. So when you're discerning the will of God, what is my future? Be in the present. Don't think so far ahead. 
Jesus said, it's not mine to give, but for my heavenly Father. My Father will be the judge. And he will. If you drink my cup, which really is the bitter cup of suffering, the bitter cross that he's talking about, if you drink that, you're going to be in heaven. You follow me. Imitate me. The Son of Man came not to serve, not to be served, but to serve and give his life. Okay, one more time. I'm just going to repeat myself. Whenever I don't have notes, I just repeat myself. That's why I have notes always. All right. How do you discern the will of God? First, is it in accord with humility, with love? Second, is it in the present moment? I understand thinking about the future. I get it. But don't think too far ahead. I know some of you guys have already planned your wedding day. You've already planned, hey, like 20 years away, I'm going to have these many kids and I'm going to have this and that. And it's just like, do you know that you just made an idol out of your future life? You are now worshiping your future life. And then when you don't get that future life, you're going to blame God because I got to blame somebody. Worship God in the present moment. Imitate him in the present moment. How is God calling you to give your life as a sacrifice? Amen?